On the GameCube, dynamic, the way we used dy dynamic lighting, so I, I elected never to use what's called specular lighting on the GameCube. Um, specular lighting and butt mapping were the two big performance traps, and that's why we never used them. So specular, what specular lighting is, is that's, that's the kind of lighting that changes as your view changes, so it's for shiny things. Mm. So like, think if you had like, like a golf ball, right? and you were shining a flashlight over it, right? There's part of the golf ball that stays the same lighting no matter which direction you look at it, right? Like imagine if the golf ball, imagine if the ball were made of, um, were just like made of dirt, right? It wouldn't really matter what direction you're looking at it. But if the ball is made of like a pearl or something like that, and it's pearlescent, then depending on where your eyes are, it sees different lighting because that's how the light bounces off the ball to hit your eye. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. So specular is that. And it's basically a, an old old way of doing that. Um, and I elected not to do that with lights because that was very expensive on the GameCube. Um, and, uh, and bump mapping was a similar thing, which is now replaced by normal mapping, um, was something we elected not to do on the GameCube. And I just emulated the specular with like <laughs> with just this like dumb spherical texture that would move around that almost looked like lighting uh but anyway so for the shots passing down the halls we were just using the gamecube hardware's what's called vertex lighting and when you didn't use specular vertex lighting was in our case was close to free and so doing the shots with the dynamic lighting like that was just kind of fine like it didn't impact in a meaningful way any performance problems so that's one of the reasons we could do it is because we could do it like any any piece of geo if it had more than like four dynamic lights hitting it then it couldn't do more than four so i would just find basically the four brightest or most impactful and have them you know impact any piece of geometry but with modern hardware you basically had to render lights off to like a separate buffer and you render them as big bubbles of light. Now, the thing about Switch is it's largely mobile hardware. It's 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 very, I mean, it's based on the NVIDIA Tegra. It's and something about mobile hardware is like it's very powerful in terms of you can run really complicated shaders, but you can't run very many of them per pixel on the screen. Uh -huh. And so what you yeah, and so what you end up doing for the Switch is you end up basically rendering the whole world once just to the depth. So basically you render all the opaque stuff to like a buffer that just writes to depth. Then you render everything again. And the switch is really good about like rejecting pixels that aren't going to render when it's opaque. So when, when, it, when there's no transparency, the switch is very good at rendering every pixel only once, nothing behind other pixels. Um, so when you render those pixels only once, you have a really complicated physically based rendering program, you can get away with 60. But then when you start rendering light bubbles, lights have a very large fall off if you want to be able like, or I mean, very fast fall off. So if you want to see a light it, it bubble, it has to be extremely bright and extremely large because lights have a nonlinear fall off. So you're basically talking about essentially doing full screen passes for pretty much any light that is being active in the game. So if you have a situation where you could be suddenly creating four lights at any point in the game, you've got to either account for that up front and keep the art budgets back or don't create lights all over the place. And I think they just you know opted for the latter of basically saying, um, don't do that. <laughs> Um, and that it's probably a hard thing because of what I said, like, because it's always just rendering every pixel once, but it's doing those PBR pixels. It probably doesn't actually even matter if the artist reduced poly count or anything like that, because it's literally just the number of things that are rendering on the screen. Like you could probably have a gigantic box with a PBR texture on it and not be able to render too many lights on top of it very much. Um, I imagine what they had is they probably had a budget that was for the base geometry, a budget for environmental effects. And I'm betting you after that budget, they probably had nothing left for dynamicism with lights or anything like that without dropping 60. So 
again, this is another situation where we designed a feature around the original GameCube hardware and what it could do. And now that they're on Switch, they've got to say yes to some things and no to some others. And that was uh, that was something that they had to ditch. I imagine it was a painful decision, but it's probably, and I hadn't thought about it before, but it's probably a decision they were sort of forced into because it was either allow for dynamic lights and have almost no environmental effects or anything, or allow for the environment to look really, really good and sacrifice some dynamic lights. 